All right, everybody, welcome back. Thank you for taking that early break. We appreciate it. Now we're going to talk to hear from Gus Wagner from Rocket Group. And Gus and I are veterans of the ground wars of the 140 Conference. We actually met in Hutchinson, Kansas, where we both had a chance to speak. Um, he gladly accepts ham. If you want to give him ham, I don't know about bacon, but for sure ham. Thanks so much, Deb. Appreciate it, everybody. I tell you what, I'm going to not sit on this microphone first off. Um, I'm going I'm to work with Annette this morning, and for a particular reason, uh, one of my uh, rocket group co-pilots, we lost him last night, my, my 12-year-old Labrador retriever who sat by my feet. Uh, oh, I know. I, just, that's, you know, I got the sympathy. But uh, I just wanted to work with Annette here this morning because I'm not in the public frame of mind. But anyway, hi. Appreciate that. Uh, hi. Good morning. My name is Gus Wagner. And I'm from the closest southernmost state capital to Des Moines, Jefferson City, Missouri. I'm glad to be back here in Des Moines. I've been here before and happy to be welcomed with open arms, Deb. Uh, <laughs> and uh, for all you Iowans, I guess all the hard feelings from the 1830s Missouri-Iowa honey war have subsided. Uh, for the last 10 years, I've owned a marketing company called The Rocket Group, at Rocket Group on Twitter. I know there's some followers here in the room today. I thank you. Uh, one of the things we market is conservative candidates and causes, more than 185 so far over the last 10 years, and for the last two-ish years, utilizing social media in new, effective, and affordable ways. So this is going to be a little bit of a counterpoint to uh, Alex's presentation. I also spent eight years as a chief of staff in the Missouri State Senate and worked primarily on ag issues. I'm a farm kid from eastern Missouri, so I have the politics, ag, and rural categories checked off today. Now, according to our schedule, I'm here to give a title ta or talk titled Hearts and Minds 2, Cruise Control. Now, this is a clear reference, uh, as Deb mentioned, to my speech at 140 in Kansas last year, where I used a 12-pound ham as a prop while discussing how to impact the hearts and minds, ham, of our elected leaders. Uh, this year, we're going to look at something different. AstroTurf. Now, before I get to this wonderful product, invented in Missouri in 1965, by the way, let me ask you for a little audience participation. Since raised hands won't show up so well on the streaming video, by applause, tell me if you've ever had a face-to-face -face lobbying or advocacy meeting with, first, a local official from more than 19,000 municipal governments in America. <laughs> Mostly this side of the room, you guys. An elected official from one of the 3,141 county governments in America. <laughs> Alex is clapping for all these, I think. Someone from one of the 99 House of Representatives or State Senates in America. <laughs> I say 99 because I know there's some uh, Nebraskans here today. Uh, a governor. <laughs> a United States Congressman or United States Senator. A president. Ah. Ever talk with a king or a newly married princess? <laughs> okay. Well, that's not what we're, it's a little bit above what we're talking about today. Uh, now, again, by applause, how many of you have had a social media conversation, outside of email, of course, with an elected official about an issue that was on a personal level and not just blasting press releases or talking points at them? <laughs> cool. <laughs> now, how many of you have organized groups? We are talking dozens, hundreds, thousands of people to take real-world action on a legislative idea. So you're from Egypt or Tunisia or Libya? Because that's exactly what I'm talking about. A lot of that activity was driven by social media. You ever watch C-SPAN and see officials and staff members spaced out, not paying attention with their noses in their space or their smartphones? <laughs> well, speaking from experience, they are checking Twitter and Facebook and email. Are they reading your messaging? As, you, as we just learned from Alex, chances are increasing that your neighborhood elected official at the local, state, and federal level is active on either Twitter or Facebook, and probably both. I should have brought a page-turning intern. And if they, are, if, if they aren't, 
More than 90% of their staff employees and other government influencers are active in social media. This is where agribusiness needs to be communicating outside of our silos. And when I say agribusiness, I mean the guy who got up at 4 a.m. to milk his small herd this morning all the way up to Cargill. If you're trying to make a dollar in farming, you are in agribusiness. Now the reason for the AstroTurf, because when folks are organized for issue-specific events and rallies, just as we do in political campaigns, government and debates, or those flash mob things, critics and naysayers say you're astroturfing, creating and utilizing false grassroots. But by combining time and commitment, speaking with truth and transparency, and being able to activate your engaged and in involved online folks to take real-world action, I like to say we are using AstroNet turf roots. I like that. Uh, I, I invented that hashtag. I invented that hashtag, and I, and I should put that on my resume. So but think about this. We live in a time when only 90, 90 out of 435 members of the U.S. House consider, consider themselves, quote, rural enough to be members of the rural caucus. Additionally, those numbers are not getting better for most of us in most congressional redistrictings going on in the states right now. Let us also consider that, according to the current HubSpot Twitter grader, States like my Missouri is negative 42%, your Iowa is negative 14%, Nebraska neg negative 17, Wisconsin negative 14%, below the national average in Twitter usage. Just another category, the Midwest allegedly lags behind the coast in, right? Well, combine those two facts and think about the shrinking representation and influence agribusiness and rural concerns receive in government. So what about the 345 congressional city cousins we need to engage on our issues? We must impact them with our AstroNet turf roots and using our truth and transparency. Here are some of my suggestions for agribusiness and rural America to move more successfully, aggressively, and positively uh, communicate ideas and leadership in this modern era. Bloggers like list, here's a list. First, follow and friend the elected officials and staff members on Twitter and Facebook. Never forget the staff. All of this information is readily available in places like tweetcongress.com. Observe how they communicate in tone and topic, for this is how they want to be communicated to. When appropriate and effective, do respond to their messages or retweet or share them with your community. Encourage your organization's members and leaders to engage the officials and staff members as well. Do offer a social media directory or a follow list of the elected officials and staff you communicate with. When you do engage them, don't talk in PR speak or try to Thomas Dolby them, blinding them with science. <laughs> speak in personal terms. Impact on jobs always opens ears. But speak the truth when you speak. Do speak, you got, you got that one now. <laughs> do speak to them as yourself and your issue, preferably not as your organization. Organizations talk to them throwing throwing talking points and direct mail all day. Unfortunately, it's all white noise. Don't be afraid to follow and sensibly engage your loyal and respected opposition, be they Democrats, Republicans, city cousins, or groups that may be working against your current efforts. You'll be surprised when you need to expand your base of allies who will step forward. Again, we can't keep talking in our silos. Be an expert on your issue. Water regulations, rural broadband, oh my goodness. Rural broadband, education needs, <coughs> taxation, whatever. Know the impact to your area, their area, and your business. Be able to back your knowledge with real information. Don't attack, start online fights, or join into them. Don't drink the Kool-Aid either, just be professional. Let them know events that are coming up, such as meetings or tours, where they can get real world experience in agribusiness and rural affairs. You will be rewarded when they attend, learn something new, and tweet about it to the world. When you meet them in the real world, do remind them gently of your social media relationship. And don't forget those city and county leaders. More, more often, this is where the activist regulation which impacts food production of all sizes is occurring or being discussed. And do be aware that the internet, like a diamond, is forever. If you put it out there, it can help you or it can come back and bite you in your pork butt. Little Iowa swine humor. <laughs> uh. Also, seek out the press that cover government at all levels so they have a more familiar relationship with you. Don't become a pest. Don't use form letter type messaging and don't blindly attack people who have no idea who you are. These are called frequent flyers and they are largely ignored and dismissed and blocked. One of the whole paradigm changing goals of social media is to base communications and commerce activities on relationships and transparencies. These same goals apply to the way we communicate with our elected officials in the 21st century. 
I'm going to drop this last list and cut to the end here because I got the thing on the side. <laughs> Why? Okay. But while the opportunity for agribusiness and rural America to be leaders in these social conversations is quickly passing us by, I must note there are active ag and rural communities on Twitter, but more effort needs to be made to take their AstroNet turf roots outside the silo. By comparison to other media, whether they are political or issue oriented, TV and radio ads are ignored. Direct mail is tossed and hopefully recycled. Lobbyists are expensive, and once a year days at the Capitol with your groups are incredibly ineffective. Got a little beat. Social media relationships are quickly becoming as important as personal relationships in impacting the hearts and minds, ham, of our elected leaders. Now again, by a show of applause, who's ready to rock their astronet turf roots into the real world action? Thank you. I hope you enjoy this as much as I have. Thank you. You got AstroTurf all over this nice chair. <laughs> <laughs>